Hello and welcome to GameSack. It's time to check out the Analog Mega SG. It's a fake Genesis, and as you may or may not know, there are a lot of different types of fake Genesises out there. But Analog is a little bit different. They pride themselves on accuracy, on compatibility, and just all around kicking ass. So, is this as good as a real Genesis, or better? Mega from Analog. This console comes in four different color varieties and it's available from Analog's website for $190. You get the console, a Master System cartridge adapter, a spacer mat for the Sega CD, an HDMI cable, a USB cable for power, as well as an AC adapter for that USB cable. The console itself has two Atari-style controller ports so that you can use any Genesis controller that you want. And because it's a Genesis, it features a headphone jack. On the side, there's an SD card slot which will allow you to jailbreak the system and play pirated games in the very near future. But for now, it's just how you do your firmware updates. Inside of the Mega SG, you'll find an Altera Cyclone 5 FPGA powering everything and not much else. You can also get a wireless 8-bit do or 8-bit do six-button controller when you buy the system if you want for an extra 25 bucks. More on this later. Powering on the Mega SG, you're greeted with a menu that should be somewhat familiar if you've ever used any of the other consoles from Analog. You can run your cartridge, play Ultra Core, which is an unreleased game until now, adjust your various settings, and tools, which allow you to enter Game Genie-style cheat codes and test your controller if you're seriously that bored. Like Analog's other consoles, this one offers resolutions of 480p, 720p, and 1080p. And as always, there are a ton of options for you to mess around with in order to customize your picture and sound presentation, especially when you enable the advanced mode. If you prefer a 4x3 for 16x9 mode, which you should, you'll want to go into the scalers option to make sure H interpolation is enabled and V interpolation is disabled. This will greatly reduce the shimmering during scrolling on games that have a resolution of 256 pixels wide compared to the more common 320 pixels wide. If you choose 4.5x height, then you'll want to make sure V interpolation is enabled as well. Just be careful because these checkboxes are kind of backwards. You actually check them if you want to disable the interpolation. There are just so many options and it's all up to you. And of course, you have other stuff like this stupid x-ray filter that Analog keeps including in their consoles because they think it's funny. Seriously, there should be speedruns of games using only this filter. And yes, there are plenty of scanline options as well and they look pretty good. There's also a few extra features. First is the buffer mode. Fully buffered mode duplicates the timing of the original Sega Genesis, but it will cause about one frame of lag and no screen tearing. The zero delay mode actually speeds up the Genesis a tiny bit so that it runs at the standard speed of 59.94 frames per second instead of the 59.92275 frames per second that the real console runs at. But that means for every 10 minutes that you play, you'll be ahead by one second compared to if you played on a real console. I don't know, can you handle that extra blast processing? Single buffered mode runs at the same speed of the original Genesis, but with less lag and you'll get some minor screen tearing here and there. Personally, I say just leave it on zero lag mode. Nobody's gonna notice the difference and I don't believe anyone who says that they do. One nice thing is that you can turn off the stupid colored borders around the screen that plague a lot of Genesis games. Usually these weren't seen back in the day on a CRT, not sure why they even existed. I guess just maybe they're a byproduct of the way the system was originally designed. Anyway, turn them off and keep them off, unless you're a weirdo. You can't turn off the colored borders in Master System games though, unless you use the cropping function. Then there's the dither blending feature. If you turn this on and adjust it, you can affect what the console does when it detects dithering. Here's how Castle of Illusion normally is. Look at the jello, that actually is created with dithering so you can kind of see through it, but it actually has like a checkerboard pattern, which is, I don't know, some people don't like it. But if you turn on the dither blending, you can see right through it as if it was a real transparency. I don't know, it kind of works okay, but it depends on the game. It is kind of fun to play with and it's cool here and there, but over the years I've just learned to appreciate the dithering for what it is and sometimes I kind of like it. There's even some audio settings. You can probably get away with leaving most of this stuff alone, but there are a few things here worth noting. First is swap left and right. Who wants backwards stereo? Well, maybe if you put on your headphones backwards and you're just too lazy to flip them around. You can adjust the ladder effect depth, which should help the system sound more like a good Model 1 Genesis instead of a Model 2, which used a Yamaha 3438 instead of a Yamaha 2612. A setting of four is most like the YM2612 and the Model 1, and that's what you want.
Then there's the YM2612 high quality mode, which supposedly helps the audio sound a touch better by keeping it at 14 bits instead of truncating it to 9. So no need to turn that off. The PSG sounds are too loud compared to a real Genesis. So be sure to go into the channel levels and set the three squares and the noise to about 32. I also recommend enabling the low pass filter and setting the cutoff to about 6900 with a roll off of about 12. It's not perfect, but it sounds pretty good. Then there's the YM3438 Busy Behavior Toggle. When it's unchecked, it behaves like a Model 1 Genesis and the music in Hellfire plays back at the proper speed. But if you check it, then it behaves like the newer chipsets in many Model 2 Genesis's and Hellfire plays the music too slow, which is the wrong speed. Reversely, if it's checked, then the original Earthworm Jim sounds like it should. So decide if Earthworm Jim or Hellfire is more important to you and leave it that way. Or just change it depending on whichever of those two games you happen to be playing. It really doesn't matter in any other game as far as I've ever noticed. There's also plenty of options like the look of the menu and what happens when you first turn the system on and things like that. Lastly, there's a bunch of settings for the LED and I guess people really love this. I don't know why, but they do. But hey, more power to you. Oh, and don't forget to save your settings after you change them. Unfortunately, Analog provides no method of writing your settings to an SD card, so each time you upgrade the firmware, everything will be reset. So instead of writing the settings to an SD card, you'll need to write them to a piece of paper and then put everything back in, one by one, which is almost as fun as testing your controller in the Tools menu. Analog says that they will fix this in a future update though, so that's good. And of course, you can enter Game Genie codes as mentioned before. Or you can use a real Game Genie if you want. Save states are not supported on consoles made by Analog, but you could get around that by using one of the top-end EverDrives. Oh, and there's a whole new menu for the Master System stuff that you can only get to while playing a Master System game and calling up the in-game menu. You'll have to set everything up one by one all over again here, as the other settings don't carry over, and be sure to save these too. Okay, those menus can be pretty overwhelming. There's a lot of different things that you can adjust to your liking, and honestly, I love it. I mean, the more options, the better. But how does it play the games? How compatible is it? And the big question, does it work with Altered Beast? This console comes with a built-in game called Ultra Core, made by DICE and Cygnosis that never got a release back in the day, but was finally finished up recently. Analog describes it as a holy grail. It is pretty good actually, from the very brief time I've spent with it so far. It's a cool single player run and gun and you can tell right away that it's European, which means there's likely to be some deadly drops of water in here somewhere. It's not as linear as Contra and whatnot, and so far it seems like it would be well worth a playthrough. It's too bad that this didn't get released back in the day. Who knows, maybe I'll have a full review of this one in the future. We were instructed to clean our cartridges well before we reviewed the Mega SG. But I'm not going to do that. Reason being is that if it works in a real 30 year old Sega Genesis, it should work just fine in the Mega SG. Granted, if you come across a cartridge that doesn't work, of course we're going to recommend cleaning it. Check out my video to learn the best ways to clean your stupid games. But so far, every cartridge that I've tried has worked perfectly fine. US and European games and Japanese Mega Drive games all fit into the cartridge slot. Even Sunsoft games fit, no problem. And they even survived the wiggle test, which the Analog NT Mini did not. The games all look, sound, and play great once you get the settings dialed in. Even the two-player mode of Sonic 2 works, but it looks pretty nasty thanks to all the interlace combing. Same goes with the dumb Int mode in Ease 3. I don't even understand why this mode is in the game. If you choose to get the 8-bit Doodo M30 wireless gamepad, you'll be getting a pretty damn good controller. It feels fantastic and it's very responsive. In fact, the D-pad feels exactly like the one Sega used in the official Genesis 6-button controllers and also the Saturn Model 2 controllers. And there's no additional lag here that my slow-ass brain can detect. And since it comes with a dongle, you can even use it on a real Sega Genesis or an Atari 2600. 
Pretty much everything that works with a real Genesis is going to work here, even Virtua Racing which uses the SVP chip in the cartridge. This is one of the few games that actually kind of benefits from the dither blending. Homebrew carts like Pure Solar work great, and games that save and load work great too. You can't back up or load save files to an SD card or anything though. Also, things like the EverDrive work fine. However, if you have Master System games on your Genesis EverDrive, they're not going to run here. Shadow and Highlight mode seem to be working fine as seen here in a Japanese version of Batman. The shadows seem to be maybe a touch brighter here than they are in a real Genesis, but that's barely even worth pointing out and honestly I could be mistaken on this. Slowdown is here and there are no options for overclocking the speed of the game nor are there any for increasing the sprites per scan line. The Genesis audio is always the biggest flaw with any kind of emulator or FPGA and the Mega SG here gets it mostly right. It's generally close enough that I don't think that 99% of people will notice or care. There is some light squealing noise that you can hear when the game isn't generating any audio. And when I was playing Sonic 2, something definitely didn't sound right. Sonic's jumping sound was coming more from the left when it should be absolutely centered. You can fix this by going into the audio panning, setting the square 1 and square 2 to 0 as they should be. Then be sure to save your settings. And who knows, they may fix this in an update, I sure hope they do. And yes, it works with my copy of Altered Beast which came with my Genesis when the console was launched. Of course, the ultimate test for accuracy may be the Titan Overdrive 2 demo, and it runs mostly very well. I made sure to force my region to PAL and also change the Mega SG's output to 1080p 50Hz since the demo is designed to take advantage of the PAL hardware. I also made sure to uncheck the masking of the top, bottom, left and right borders. With that said, it messes up in this scene here where the borders get actual graphics on them. The top and bottom borders are mostly there, but the left border is extremely clipped and the right border is completely gone. So the accuracy with this aspect isn't quite there yet. Still, when it comes to playing actual Genesis games, the Mega SG isn't going to let you down. Alright, so the compatibility is absolutely fantastic, so is the accuracy, in fact it's played everything that I've thrown at it so far. However, playing Genesis games isn't the only thing that the Mega SG can do. You can also play Master System games with the included adapter. If you're playing using a Genesis controller, then buttons A and C act as button 2 and B as button 1 and start as pause. This is great, especially for those pesky games that have the jump and action button backwards like Zillion here. And having the pause on the actual controller is really nice as well. You can use a regular Master System controller, but you lose the pause button unless you modify the adapter. Light phaser games don't work, of course, and neither do 3D games. Analog says that they'll offer a DAC later this year to allow people to play on a CRT which will enable these features. The games default to FM sound if the title supports it unless you change it to PSG in the core settings. The FM sound is mostly accurate, but I noticed a difference in Rastan. In real life, Rastan sounds like this in FM. But on the Mega SG, the FM sounds like this. Otherwise, I had no issues playing Master System games. In fact, it's all quite pleasant. The Master System EverDrive also works. You can even load up SG-1000 ROMs from your Master EverDrive and play them, though they're supposed to be coming out with the cartridge converter so you can use your real SG-1000 carts. Oh, and if you want to play Master System card games, well screw you because you can't. Unless you use the Hyperkin Master System adapter, then it'll work. And if you do that, you can even play F-16 Fighting Falcon, which won't even run on a real Genesis since it uses a video mode from the SG-1000, which just happens to be supported on the Mega SG.
If you have a Sega CD, the Mega SG works with that too. It comes with a little rubber spacer mat, that's kind of cool. Also, be sure to enable external audio in the settings and just leave it that way. This ends up being a weird hybrid of real hardware working with faked hardware, but mostly it's just fine. It works just like it would connecting to a real Genesis. The backup RAM cartridge is recognized. You can move files to and from it as well as load and save games directly to the cartridge. Both audio and video is output over HDMI and you won't need any weird mixing cable setups. The audio level mix between the Genesis sounds and the Sega CD sounds seems to be about right, like a Model 1 connected with a mixing cable and volume slider set to 9 or 10. This can all be adjusted in the menu, of course. Even the homebrew Pure Solar works in tandem with its own weird Sega CD disc. You'd think that the FMV games would benefit a little bit from the dither blending option, but on or off, they're still really grainy. Sadly, the Mega SG can't bypass the region setting that's in the Sega CD hardware itself, so you'll need to find another solution to play import CD games. And there are games that have issues like Willy Beamish. As the opening cutscene finishes up, the graphics go to crap, and then as it begins to load the actual game, it completely crashes. Not like anyone wants to or should play this game anyway. And unfortunately, if you have the Sega CD hooked up, it breaks compatibility with a lot of Master System games. Some still work, but most that I'm trying don't. They definitely need to fix this. And it goes without saying that the 32X doesn't work, though I just said it anyway. Interesting though, the Sega CD game Fahrenheit sees the 32X if it's attached and asks you to put in the 32X disc. Nothing happens after that, of course. The Mega SG is also supposedly compatible with Game Gear games, but a cartridge adapter has not been offered on their store, so we can't report on the quality or compatibility in that regard. Well, there you have it, the Analog Mega SG. So is it worth it for $189.99? Well, honestly, that depends. Do you have a Genesis that's set up for RGB with an upscaler like the Frame Meister or the OSSC? If so, probably not, unless you're just really enthusiastic about video game hardware like I am. If you don't have any of that stuff and you just want to play your Genesis games on an HD TV without any lag, then hell yeah, this is worth it. This is the best fake Genesis there is, and it's only going to get better with future firmware updates. It's not perfect, but it's going to get really, really close, especially soon. So let me know what you guys think about your Analog Mega SGs. It's out today, and I'll be interested in reading your comments about it. And in the meantime, thank you for watching GameSag. GameSat commercial for the Analog Mega SG, take one. Introducing the Mega SG from Analog U. With the Mega SG, you can- Cut. Mega SG, Joe. Analog Mega SG. Introducing the Mega SG from Analog. With the Cut. Mega- Cut. Analog. Not anal. N never anal. Introducing the Mega SG from Analog. With the Mega SG... Oh, you... Joe, that's the Super NT, not the Mega SG. That's the Super Nintendo version, idiot. Introducing the Mega NT from Analog. With the Mega NT, you can... Mega SG, not the NT. What does SG stand for? Sega Genesis. You sure it's not Sega?